The laws that govern our food system actually make our food dangerous, unhealthy, and bland. You can't sell a Big Gulp in this town anymore, but it's perfectly legal for families to go hungry. The current food system wasn't designed to be sustainable, or healthy, or fair to local farmers. It was designed for three other goals. Durable food products, year-round supply, and low cost. And it's done a stunning job at accomplishing those three things. But this system can't go on. When you hear crickets chirping, what do you think of? By the year 2050, there will be an additional 2 billion people on the planet. And economists say that we are unlikely to have the food resources to feed everyone. Edible insects could be the key to global food sustainability. FDA 2011, 7.7 .7 million pounds of antibiotics to treat humans. Look at that number for animals that we made sick by designing the systems we asked them to live in. We are in an absolute end game situation. We have to change, we have to redesign. Only 20% of those antibiotics are being used to treat sick animals. 80% are being used as production tools to make animals grow faster. They're being used to prevent diseases or treat diseases that are occurring just because of the way we're raising animals. When I see these operations, I don't see factories making meat. I see factories making trillions and trillions and trillions of drug-resistant bacteria. Change needs to happen from both outside the established food system in the form of thriving local organic farms and inside the established food system. Both small organic farms and big organic in the supermarket are growing side by side. Both are thriving and both are steadily chipping away at the status quo. So I urge you to choose organic wherever and whenever you can so we can keep this healthy food revolution growing. This is my, this is my son. What does it really mean to be a farmer? And why is this connection, this feeling that I have for that land, so important that he know? And why is that important for our future? And all I do know is that words won't cut it sometimes, and sometimes we need more. Strong social movements come from strong relationships. So I'm talking about allies. To build strong relationships, we need allies in the movement so that different types of people can come together to create change together. One of the things that we talk about at Green For All is the ability to protect from harm and create the future at the same time. That's something that we always have to do. And we can create the future when we have hope, when we're laughing, when we're singing, when we actually bring the soul and the spirit and the vibe and the uh, into our work. Even though it has this sense of the Monday blues and another manic Monday, our research actually indicates that most people see it as an opportunity for a fresh start. So it's kind of like this mini New Year's, but rather than just one time a year, you get 52 chances to stay on track. It's really, I think, through the simplest actions that can unify us the most. With the food database, which will launch later this year. There are lots of ways in which we have to fix and change the food system, but one of them is make it easy for consumers to begin identifying some of the clear problems with it. We'll be rating about 80,000 products in beta phase. It's a very large data set already. 5,000 different ingredients and about 1,500 brands. The one thing that we should be doing is home ec for the 22nd century. We need to have food literacy as part of the academic curriculum in every school. We need to stop feeding children carnival food. We need to stop serving them food on a stick. We got rid of that stuff. We no longer serve the chocolate milk and strawberry milk. We no longer serve the chicken nuggets and corn dogs. We don't serve the pizza.
What we do serve is good, healthy, quality, nutritious food. Just a couple weeks ago, I was told after removing the chicken nuggets from the menu that I was taking all of the fun out of school lunch. With the obesity stats that we're facing, we're seeing kids missing school because they're sick far too often. We're seeing a lower academic performance. School food can be that catalyst for change. The neighborhoods that are predominantly healthy aren't the same ones that are predominantly wealthy because when you're not choosing between buying your medicine and your groceries, health doesn't have to be a luxury. It doesn't have to be an abstract concept presented in academic journals and policy briefs. My students overcome more every day than I will in my lifetime. I'm a poet and I'm a teacher. And so much of my work is informed by the lives of my students, their families, and our community. I see it as an opportunity to tell the stories of my students' lives and break them out of these cultural caricatures that they're too often compartmentalized in. So this conference is about changing the way we eat, but I also want to make sure that we're changing the way we talk. If we're really going to change the way we eat, then we really need to change the way we give. In Navajo Nation, I don't know how many of you know, but very recently, January 30th, they passed a historic 2% tax on junk food. They are the only place to do it. They passed a historic, historic tax, and they eliminated a 5% tax on fresh local food. This is when the internet levels the playing field. This is when any mom in Texas who starts a blog can be an activist and can change what's going on in our food system. For so many people, on so many levels, and for so many reasons, food is a problem. But for all of us, food is the solution. I, me, you, us, the power in this room is incredible. We are the ones we've been waiting for, ladies and gentlemen. And this is our moment. So when I say people, you say power. People. Power. People. Power. Power. America. Let's do this. The hunt for food needs to start recruiting hunters. Because so particular to this moment, the movement tends to exclude the very voices that it seeks to advocate for. We need to get hunters to reclaim their roots, their root vegetables, their fruits, their fruits of labor, their native dishes, their dignity, their humanity, their hunger, and their fulfillment. We need to hunt without heartache and despair. And we need to be empowered to join forces instead of opening our mouths just to hear someone else tell our story. Do we have a food movement? And the heart of it is yes, we have a food movement because all of us fighting for all of those different pieces are doing so because we believe that fair food is a fundamental human right. Food justice means that everyone in this country and hopefully further will have access to fresh, unadulterated broccoli. So now it's time for us, in Herbert Bloomer's words, to bridge and amplify and share the broccoli. The other NRA, under the leadership of Herman Cain, struck a deal with Congress saying that they wouldn't oppose an increase in the overall minimum wage as long as the minimum wage for tipped workers stayed frozen forever at $2.13 an hour. When you leave a tip in most states in the United States, you are actually paying the workers' wage. In fact, 70% of tipped workers in America are women. They work at restaurants like the IHOP and Applebee's and Olive Garden. They make a median wage of $8 an hour, including tips. The women who put food on our tables in America cannot actually afford to feed themselves. When are we going to see that we cannot have actually truly sustainable food without sustainable conditions for the workers who touch that food? Because we cannot shop our way out of a problem. And the congressman said, what are you talking about? If we don't hear about it up here, there is no movement. We produce more than enough food in this country to feed people. People were hungry for political reasons. The food policy action also is a C4. So we can get directly involved in races. We can make sure that we're singling out the people who are doing the right thing and the people that are doing the wrong things, they need to lose their jobs. And as soon 
as one legislator loses their job over the way they vote on hunger issues and food issues. When that happens, we're going to send a clear message to Congress that we're organized, we're viable, and we're strong, and yes, we have a food movement, and it's coming for you. <laughs>